after studying this module you should be able to know about existential psychology learn about the origin of existential psychology understand the basic features of existential psychology learn about the comparison between humanistic and existential psychology analyze some of the key concepts of existential psychology and evaluate the antecedent factors of existential psychology introduction the subject matter of psychology tries to seek out to understand how individuals learn to be in the world it attempts to rectify those destructive or dysfunctional behaviors of living that individuals engage in through psychotherapy on the other hand in the absence of dysfunction most important questions of being or what exactly it means to be human frequently comes about in the minds of theorists and therefore finds a place in the field of philosophy nevertheless the field of existential psychology assimilates both the questions of philosophy with the basic features of psychology existential psychology deliberates how these philosophical questions have an impact on psyches and behaviors of individuals and how individuals live out their day-to-day -day lives within the perspective of these questions questions not straightforwardly answered by scientists or philosophers existential psychologists asserts that it's not only vital to recognize and reduce the symptomatology of mental illnesses addictions relationship issues and other psychological issues but most essential is to go beyond the symptoms and moving on to understand how a being explains meaning purpose and a life well lived existentialists considers that symptoms can still be reduced but unhappiness and discontent persist usually leading to occurrence of symptoms again aggravate and eventually it becomes more difficult to handle the development of existential psychology took place in europe and it gradually spread to america it had come about as a protest to behaviorism that had concentrated the human beings to a machine made up of conditioned and unconditioned reflexes existential psychologists have asserted that behaviorism has dehumanized the persons they reason that the basic nature of the person is human and in a bid to be scientific and experimental one should not forget about this basic nature of human beings this module may be summarized as follows existential psychologists assert that it's not only vital to recognize and reduce the symptomatology of mental illnesses addictions relationship issues and other psychological issues but most essential is to go beyond the symptoms and moving on to understand how a being explains meaning purpose and a life well lived the development of existential psychology took place in europe and it gradually spread to america existentialism is considered as a philosophical outlook that highlights the significance of free will freedom of choice and personal responsibility the term existentialism is derived from the latin existir which denotes to stand out or to emerge the existential approach emphasizes on the human beings as he or she is developing and becoming for existentialists a basic unity exists between individuals and their environments they defined unity by the term they say which means being in the world three instantaneous modes of the world characterize us in our desi unwelt mitwelt and eigenwelt it was soren kierkegaard a danish philosopher who is usually referred to as the father of existentialism in existentialism a philosophical method is used which is referred to as phenomenology phenomenology refers to the careful and complete study of phenomena 
and is essentially the invention of the philosopher Edmund Husserl. The very effort to be scientific means approaching things from a definite viewpoint, the scientific viewpoint. Thus, one can't get rid of subjectivity because it isn't somewhat isolated from objectivity at all. This interconnectedness of subject and object is known as intentionality. According to existentialists, to live authentically refers to being aware of one's freedom and duty to create oneself, of the unavoidability of anxiety, guilt and death. It deals with accepting these things in an act of self-affirmation. It means involvement, compassion and commitment. According to existential psychology, life's meaning is under no circumstances fixed and is continuously being created and recreated. This perspective attempts to understand quite a lot of basic human dimensions, some of which are the capacity for self-awareness, freedom and responsibility, creating one's identity and meaningful relationships with others, the search for meaning and purpose, and lastly, awareness of death. As we are aware that both the existential and humanistic psychology are together called the third force in psychology, still despite some similarities, these two are slightly different movements. Overview of Existential Psychology Existentialism is considered as a philosophical outlook that highlights the significance of free will, freedom of choice and personal responsibility. Existentialism focuses upon the unique experiences of each individual and the responsibility each person has for making whatever choices they take and also of what they can make of themselves. Existentialism assumes that the human to be confronted by the reality of transitory existence and the understanding that life has no inherent meaning. Meaning had to be constructed. The term existentialism is derived from the Latin exister which denotes to stand out or to emerge. The existential approach emphasizes on the human beings as he is developing and becoming. According to this approach, authentic human beings were those who could face existential ineffectiveness and nonetheless still go on to create a meaningful life for themselves. For existentialists, a basic unity exists between individuals and their environments. They defined unity by the term Dasein, which means being in the world. Three instantaneous modes of the world characterizes us in a Dasein, Amwelt or the environment around us, Mitwelt or our world with other people, and Egenwelt or our relationship with ourselves. Individuals are equally aware of themselves as living beings and also are aware of the prospect of non-being or nothingness. Death is the most understandable form of non-being which can also be experienced as withdrawal from life experiences. It was Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher who is usually referred to as the father of existentialism. Kierkegaard specified, I exist, therefore I think. In contrast to the philosopher René Descartes' famous words, I think, therefore I am. The simple statement influenced an entire group of European philosophers and psychologists, changing their approach to treatment. Kierkegaard's philosophy was not as willingly acknowledged in the United States. Rollo May, the American psychologist, was one of the central figures in the field of existential psychology. It was he who introduced the concepts and ideology of existentialists in the United States to other prominent psychologists and well-known philosopher William James. It was James who believed in the key component of existential psychology, which was of free will. During the period from the 1920s and 1930s, existentialism was being silently introduced predominantly in university classrooms. 
Paul Tillich at the Union Theological Seminary in New York introduced the idea of existentialism to Rollo May where he was studying to be a Congregationalist minister. Some of the well-known professionals such as Viktor Frankl were beginning to make known existentialism to the world through their writings and lectures. Frankl had survived imprisonment at the Nazi death camp and wrote personally of the events that modeled his beliefs. In the American Psychological Association APA Symposium on Existential Psychology and Psychotherapy on September 5, 1959, many prominent theorists like May and fellow psychologists Abraham Maslow and Hermann Felfel participated and it turned out to be a significant landmark as because of which the idea of existential psychology and its term began to spread the forefront of psychological thought and practice existentialism reached its prominence during the 1930s and 1950s in europe but after the symposium the word existentialism had become one of the buzz words of psychology in the 1960s may termed the existential approach to psychotherapy by asserting that the task of therapy was to understand the patient fully as that patient truly exists such therapy would need a commitment on the part of the patients to fully understand the lives they were living or the lives in which they were existing nevertheless in addition to its impact as a key system of psychological practice existentialism characterized an awareness that developed following world war 2 predominantly with the baby boomer generation thus the concepts of existentialism were no longer just limited to the discussion in private halls of universities but were now accepted universally for instance may's book love and will remained on us list of best seller for over 4 months representing that a new age of people from numerous educational backgrounds were prepared to look into themselves as only a few had done in the previous decades self help books also came about in the book stores which was a clear sign of the willingness of people to explore deep into their own existence methodology used in existential psychology in existentialism a philosophical method is used which is referred to as phenomenology phenomenology refers to the careful and complete study of phenomena and is essentially the invention of the philosopher admard husserl phenomena are the contents of consciousness the things qualities relationships events thoughts images memories fantasies feelings acts and so on which we experience phenomenology is an attempt to allow these experiences to communicate to us to make known themselves to us so we might refer to them in an unbiased manner as much as possible If one has studied about experimental psychology this might seem like one more way of speaking about being objective as in science similarly in experimental psychology one tries to get free of one's subjectivity and comprehend things as they actually are nonetheless the phenomenologist would put forward that one can't get free of subjectivity completely no matter how much they try the very effort to be scientific means approaching things from a definite viewpoint the scientific viewpoint thus one can't get rid of subjectivity because it isn't somewhat isolated from objectivity at all the interconnectedness of subject and object is known as intentionality it has been observed that this method has been used to study other concepts such as different emotions psychopathologies things like separation loneliness and solidarity the artistic experience the religious experience silence and speech perception and behavior etc thus existentialism has adopted this method to understand and ask the most vital question what is it to be human therefore one could say that the crux of humanity the thing that we all share and makes us different from anything else in the world is our lack of essence our nothingness our freedom 
human beings cannot be apprehended by a philosophical system or a psychological theory they cannot be reduced to physical and chemical processes and one cannot predict the future of human beings through social statistics nevertheless one cannot deny that some of us are men some are women some are black some are white some come from one culture and some from another some are poor so some are rich some are in perfection some another the raw materials differ dramatically but it is how one chooses to live that makes each of us what we are thus it is in our hand how each one of us can create ourselves Ben Swanger, one of the pioneers of existential psychologist, about whom would be discussing in detail in upcoming modules, embraced many of the terms and concepts presented by the existential philosopher Martin Heidegger. One of them was Dasein, which many existentialists usually refers to as human existence. As described earlier, it refers to being there. but the original word carries a few more understated implications the emphasis is on the the or there and so dasein has the sense of being in the middle of it all in the thick of things however never to a certain extent belonging there we are thrown into a universe that is not of our choosing when we begin choosing our life we begin with many choices made for us genetics environment society family etc all those raw material over which we don't have any say as such existentialist theorists are known for indicating that life is hard they have stated that the physical world gives us both that is pain as well as pleasure whereas the social world can result in again both the outcomes that is heartbreak and loneliness as well as love and affection and finally the personal world more specifically comprises anxiety and guilt and these hard things are not only likelihoods in life they are unavoidable it was observed that existential theorists were overly concerned about death they asserted that when one faces death it is most likely that they would be able to come to an understanding of life according to them it is only humans who are aware of their own end when one becomes aware of mortality one may initially shun away from it and try to forget that it is a reality by getting busy in the day to day activities of the social world from them this will not work for them avoiding death means avoiding life existentialist believe that usually most of us most of the time live lives that comprise a denial of our full humanity of our day scene with its anxiety and guilt and death they refer to this denial as in atonicity somebody who is living in atonicity is no longer becoming but only being if life is movement these individual have stopped there are as many ways to be in atonitic as there are people but conventionality is the most common style of in atonicity today it includes take no notice of one's freedom and living a life or conformity and shallow materialism if you can manage to be like everyone else you don't have to make your own choices you can turn to authority or to your peers or to media for guidance you can become too busy to even notice the moral decision you need to make basic features of existential psychology as we have discussed initially the existential psychology had left out behaviorist psychology because of its mechanistic view and instead it attempts to view people as involved in defined search for meaning it seems to give an assurance of helping to reestablish the meaning of life and lean towards getting spiritual awakening and growth that may bring freedom from the orthodox awakening and growth and also may bring about freedom from the conventional restraints of the society some of the chief features of the existential psychology are existential psychology attempts to understand the person as such an individual who exists as a being in the world as he digger stated that the human beings is their being 
the scene denoting that the human beings exist as the estimate of possibilities which open up as a world the fundamental goal of existential psychology is to comprehend a person in his total existential reality it takes exceptional attention to those problems and issues which are unique to each individual consequently it identifies that every person has a unique personal life with numerous types of perceptions in addition it emphasizes that a man is unique not only from inner or personal life but he is also unique from other species he is a special creature with some endowments not found in other animals existential psychology is essentially deals with a person's consciousness his moods emotions feelings thinking as well as his several experiences as they are connected to the existence in the environment of other people it always purposes at understanding human nature as a whole there are some common components that have been highlighted by numerous existential psychologists and those features are human values meaning of life man to man relationship suffering anxiety conflict and death existential psychology asserted that as individual has a freedom to choose he is also accountable for his own existence existentialist believe that what he is and he will be is the solidarity responsibility of the person himself as a result the existential psychologist have rejected any kind of external determinism they stated that human beings are in charge for mobilizing the courage to safeguard take care sustain and enhance the self they also pointed out to the fact that people need other people with whom they can empathize and learn the major concerns of the existential psychologist have been areas like personality psychotherapy and counseling for existentialist anxiety originates out of awareness that one's being can end some of the key concepts in existential psychology according to existential psychology life's meaning is under no circumstances fixed and is continuously being created and recreated this perspective attempts to understand quite a lot of basic human dimensions some of which are the capacity of self awareness freedom and responsibility creating one's identity and meaningful relationship with others the search for meaning and purpose and lastly awareness of death existential psychology and self awareness first human dimension of existential psychology is known as self awareness it is as referred to as one's capacity to be aware of one's own determinant nature according to theory and practice of counseling and psychotherapy 8th edition written by grelat cory published by thompson in 2009 it assumes that if one is more aware of oneself then there is more likelihood for that individual to expand and being free self awareness increases capability to live a full and satisfying life one can decide on whether to expand or contract self awareness consciousness of self permits understanding of alternatives motivations and development of personal goals freedom and responsibility in existential psychology second human dimension of existential psychology which we will consider is freedom and responsibility according to corey even though individuals assert that they yearn for freedom the existential approach states that most of the people would make an effort to escape this freedom people do this in order to avoid responsibility of making choices freedom indicates that one takes responsibility for choices and actions they take development of freedom and responsibility results in having power over life's direction the existential therapist assumes that one is being inauthentic when making an attempt to escape responsibility at the cost of freedom nevertheless in reality one is at all times free to make choices between actions and inactions assuming responsibility is being authentic about one's innate freedom existential psychology and self identity 
when one assumes responsibility with it comes the struggle for developing self identity and building relationships with others thus the next human dimension of existential psychology is self identity self awareness allows forward movement in spite of adverse situations even though people are at the end of the day alone in their responsibility over their own life and they also try to find affiliation with others existential exploration can be seen as making an effort to balance the human need for self identity and also understanding with other human beings existential psychology and life meaning one of the most vital human dimension which emerges when one tries to search for one's self identity is they eventually start looking for meaning in life Corey believed that existential therapy includes questioning and possibly dumping one's old values. Still, this may result in feeling of emptiness and meaninglessness. Many therapists believe it is their concern to guide the client through this uncertain time of meaningless. The therapist may act as a support system for the client when they are in the process of creating a new meaning in life for themselves. existential psychology and death in conclusion existential therapy concentrate on awareness of death core asserted that in existential psychology death is a central characteristic which has been given a lot of thought for existentialist death is inevitable and it is responsible for promoting motivation for human beings to live life to the fullest rather than fearing death as a threat one can view death as something that is essential for life to have meaning some of current research on death has studied the probable positive effects of psychedelic drugs on dealing with the existential anxiety of confronting death therapists should talk directly to clients about death to show that death is not a subject matter that should be feared comparison between existential and humanistic psychology the main points of similarities between the existential psychology and the humanistic psychology both the existential and humanistic psychology highlights upon the study of a person's inner structure his experiences images feelings cognitive abilities therefore both lay emphasis upon subjectivism in psychology existentialist and humanistic psychology both stress upon the same method that is phenomenological method in studying and analyzing the inner structure of the person both psychologies emphasize upon free will of the person and considers each person as having complete freedom that brings a sense of responsibility to own life in a creative way existential and humanistic psychology both lay emphasis upon man's uniqueness and individuality they both assert that each person is poles apart from other in approaching the objects and events of the world in his own unique way both the existential and humanistic psychology are concerned with treatment of mentally ill people they consider that the personality disorganization arises when the person develops incongruence in the perception of several objects such incongruence in the long run have a tendency to disturb human psychological growth both existential and humanistic psychology are movements in psychology and not system of psychology in spite of these similarities there are some key features that are distinct between the existential and humanistic psychology those major points of distinctions are as under the humanistic psychology underlines more upon the study of different types of needs including the need for self actualization on the other hand existential psychology focuses more upon the study of being in the world for understanding the human nature in comparison to existential psychology humanistic psychology is more optimistic in elucidating of human nature and his potentialities both the psychologies also diverge from each other fundamentally with respect to the interpretation of motivation 
humanistic psychology has highlighted more upon the process of self actualization or self fulfillment of the individual in contrast existential psychology has stressed more upon the spiritual motives or spiritual mission that gives person his freedom responsibility dignity and superiority in his life let us summarize what we have learned existential psychologists assert that it's not only vital to recognize and reduce the symptomatology of mental illnesses addictions relationship issues and other psychological issues but most essential is to go beyond the symptoms and moving on to understand how our being explains meaning purpose and a life well lived The development of existential psychology took place in Europe and it gradually spread to America. Existentialism is considered as a philosophical outlook that highlights the significance of free will, freedom of choice and personal responsibility. The term existentialism is derived from the Latin exister which denotes to stand out or to emerge. The existential approach emphasizes on the human beings as he is developing and becoming. For existentialist a basic unity exists between individuals and their environments. They define unity by the term dasein which means being in the world. Three instantaneous modes of the world characterize us in our dasein Umwelt, Mitwelt and Eigenwelt. It was Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher who is usually referred to as the father of existentialism. In existentialism, a philosophical method is used which is referred to as phenomenology. Phenomenology refers to the careful and complete study of phenomena and is essentially the invention of the philosopher Edmund Husserl. The very effort to be scientific means approaching things from a definite viewpoint, the scientific viewpoint. thus one cannot get rid of subjectivity because it isn't somewhat isolated from objectivity at all this interconnectedness of subject and object is known as intentionality according to existentialist to live authentically refers to being aware of one's freedom and duty to create oneself of the unavoidability of anxiety guilt and death it deals with accepting these things in an act of self affirmation it means involvement compassion and commitment according to existential psychology life's meaning is under no circumstances fixed and is continuously being created and recreated this perspective attempts to understand quite a lot of basic human dimensions some of which are the capacity of self awareness freedom and responsibility creating one's identity and meaningful relationship with others the search for meaning and purpose and lastly awareness of death as we are aware that both the existential and humanistic psychology are together called third force in psychology still despite some similarities these two are slightly different movements